So uh, this week, this week, I want to just jump straight into the deep end of, of a really tough topic. Today, I want to talk about loss, about dealing with loss, um, how to help people going through it, and also what to do if it's you. There are some really close people in my life that they've, they've lost some really close people, some parents of theirs they lost, and some siblings they've lost. Uh, I'll go into some of that in a little bit. But this season can be really, really tough for a lot of people. I want to equip you as a church to be able to minister to others. But also, if it's you, I want you to know what to do so that you can make this season different. That the ghosts of Christmas past that typically have haunted you, you can get, those, you can get that stuff out of here once and for all, for now and forevermore, and begin to live the kind of life that God designed you to live. Today, I want to talk about loss. And I'll start it out with a, with, a little, with a little story. It's not really a story. It's a true story. It's a true story about a real pastor, and it goes something like this. Let's go! Let's go! Party of six! I just went to Chili's recently, and it was, they were calling out, Jones! Party of five! And I'm like, all right, okay, chill. First of all, first of all, I'm right here. <laughs> Second of all, let's go! Party of six! But when... Pastor Levi, that's his name, Levi Lusco. Maybe you've heard of him. He's pretty famous. He's on K-Love and stuff. And Maybe you've never heard of his story, though. Lusco, party of sick. Every, every time he hears that, it's like a dagger to his heart. Because it's supposed to be Lusco, party of seven. It, it should have been party of seven. But every time he hears Lusco, party of six, he's reminded of what happened. See, when... when his middle daughter was five years old. His middle daughter died of a severe asthma attack while they were wrapping Christmas presents. It's hard to imagine what that must, what Christmas must be like in the Lusco family. While wrapping Christmas presents, his, his daughter has such a severe asthma attack that it just cuts off all the oxygen to her brain. They're trying to wake her up. He's holding her, shaking her. Come on, wake up, wake up. Five years old. But by the time the ambulance get there, it was already too late. She had died. She had passed away. Put yourself in this man's shoes just for a moment. Every year, every year, Christmas comes around. And there's jingle bells, and there's presents, and there's wrapping paper, and there's the reminder of tragedy. The reminder of tragedy. Today I want to talk about loss, and maybe some of you know someone who's been through something like this. Maybe some of you have been through something like this or someone close to you passed. And now every time, everybody's all happy and it's Christmas and yeah, yeah, yeah. But inside, you're broken. Inside, you're left thinking, why did this happen? How did this happen? And it's never as hard to deal with during this season. Most of the year, we can get through it. We don't have to think about it. It's not there. Try and ignore it. But when the Christmas season comes around, there's something crazy that happens. You know how this feels. Some of you know, but maybe it's not even a death. Let's talk about some other kinds of loss. Maybe you lost a member of your, maybe you lost a spouse. Maybe you're single now when it should be party of two is party of one. Uh, maybe you lost something uh, like a career that you've had for a long time. Maybe you know someone like this. This is always twofold. Maybe you know someone like this, or maybe it's you. Or you lost your spouse. You lost a family for for whatever reason, you're not able to see them anymore, or something very serious to you. There's good news, and I want to get to it as fast as possible. <laughs> the good news is this. The good news is this. God is willing, and he is able to get us through even things like this. He wants to lift you up. He wants to be the lifter of your head. That's what the word says about God. He's the lifter of our head. He's the one that comes close. He's the one who helps us. He wants to, he will, he wants to bring comfort to you this very day. So how and what should we do? Because when loss happens, people say how sorry they are, don't they? Don't they always do that? They're like, oh, so sorry, I'm here for you, shoot you a text. But after a couple of weeks, a few weeks, it's amazing how people forget about the thing that you can't forget about. And, and there seems to be distance, and it's always, it's always easy to help someone at first, but then after a month goes by, you're left alone again. What should we do? People forget, but God never does. God never forgets. Where people, even I fail sometimes. I don't reach out to everybody I'm supposed to reach out to all the time. I forget to follow. I mean, human beings, we fail. Try as we might, 
We get it wrong sometimes. We're not able to comfort people. But where we fail, God never fails. He's always there. Listen to this scripture right here, and I'm going to break this down just a little bit. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is close. Everyone say close. He is close to the brokenhearted. And this one, he rescues. Say rescues out loud for me. Those who are, whose spirits are crushed. What this means is that when we are brokenhearted, God is never closer to us, it seems, when we are brokenhearted. He gets closer than ever before. And not only is he close to us, he's not just close, he also wants to rescue us. He wants to do something about it. He doesn't just want to be close. It's one thing just to be close. It's another thing to be, to lift someone up. That's who God wants to be for you. He wants to rescue you. Despite what some people might say or teach or, or think that, that as Christians, we're just supposed to, to suffer all the time and be miserable and depressed. And really, that's just your lot in life. The word says right here that he wants to rescue you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to be close to you. And he also wants to help you get out of the pain and the suffering and the muck and the mire that you're in and set your feet back on solid ground so that you can live the kind of life he's always wanted for you to live. Always, always, always. He wants that for you. If you are grieving right now for any reason, even if it's something you, even if it's something you caused, sometimes we lose things and we caused it. I know that story. I know that story really well. I was not raised in church, and I lost a lot of things because of my own dumb choices. <laughs> no amens on that. That's cool. That's cool. I like pause for the amen. No amens. But that's all right. That's all right. I didn't, I didn't want you to amen that one anyways. It's no good. But even if you caused it, even if it was a, a mistake you made that, that hurt someone, it's a mistake you made that caused the, the relationship to fail. It's a mistake you made that hurt someone, that hurt yourself. Even if you're the one that caused the brokenheartedness, the Lord is still closer to you than ever before. It doesn't matter who caused it. It doesn't matter how it happened. It doesn't matter if it was a mistake you made or a mistake someone else made or if it was just no mistake at all. If it's just something that happened, God wants to be there for you no matter what. He wants to be there for you. He also wants to lift you up. Listen to this. I'm, I, it's, it's hard to describe the goodness of God in this way during the painful times. It's one of the tougher questions anyone could ever be asked. Why did, why did this happen? Why did that happen? I remember getting licensed for my, uh, for, for my pastoral license, and they hit me with like some of the tougher questions that I could ever be asked. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I don't. This is tough. This is hard work. Like, hey, we prayed for grandma. She died. I'm like, even Lazarus died after they raised him from the dead. I'm like, everybody dies, right? But can I say that to an interview panel? I'm not sure. Anyways, let me describe it to you the best way I can, try and paint the picture for you. Um, I'm not a morning person at all. N not one bit of me. I'm more of like an artist. I would sleep until noon if no one wanted me to wake up, if no one needed me to wake up, and if there was nothing, nothing to it, I would just sleep in as long as I possibly could. Amen to that. You could say amen on that, man. Let's say it's Christmas time and it's dark, and I just want to sleep. I'm just so warm under here, but... But, uh, you know, I, I can't do that. I got to wake up. I got to get to work, man. The phone starts ringing at like 7. I got stuff to do even before that. And so I have to wake up early. I got to wake up early. So I wake up at 5.45, and it's, it's, I just I hate it. I absolutely hate it. But I do it anyways. And my wife, on the other hand, she's still sleeping during that time. All right? We, we, we all on track. We're on the same page here. She's still sleeping at that time and for a while after that. Um, but let me just tell you something. If, if I wake if I wake her up at 545, you would be mourning my loss, okay? I wouldn't be here the next Sunday or any Sunday after that because you would be having my funeral. It would not work out well. She would end me. She would end me. So it's important for me at 545 in the morning when it's still dark, it's so cold, the heater hasn't even come on yet, and it's so dark. It's important for me to make sure she's still sleeping. So my watch, my watch, remember my watch has this, this feature. I'm going to try and turn it on. It's called the gentle glow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's a gentle glow. So if I turn it on right here, bam, there it is. Can anybody see that? It's like it turns white a little bit. You can see it sort of, but if I'm like just hanging out, it's like with the spotlights on, it just barely looks white. If, if the lights are all on in the house, nobody can see this. It doesn't make any sense. It's just there. But this little tiny light, when it's dark in my room, lights up the whole place. My whole room is, is lit up 
just based on this little, it's enough for me to put my shoes on. It's enough for me to get warm and cozy. I got some Ugg boots. I'll put those on. Don't judge me for a second. I'll wear some Ugg boots in the morning. I see you all judging me. It's dark in here, but I can still feel the judgment. I'm not worried about it, though. It's cold. My office is in my garage, all right? I got to do something. I got to do something. But this little light, when it's dark, this is a game changer because it gets me what I need, but it doesn't bother her. Listen to me. When our lives feel dark, even the smallest bit of light can make the world of difference. Makes the world of difference. Sometimes God's goodness and God's mercy is a lot like a little light like this. When things are fine, when the lights are all on, you don't even notice. You don't even realize it's there. But as soon as things get, get dark, why is it that we always notice God when we need him? I'm going to turn this off. Back in my, in my background, what this means is, you know, when you're about to catch a case and you're in jail, prayer life is on point. When you got a joint suspended sentence hanging over your head, you're like, all of a sudden, you're Hail Mary, and you don't even know what that means, and you're like, you're praying, you're like Pentecostal, all of a sudden, you're jumping up and down, praying like this. You don't know what you're doing, but you are praying like a madman when you need him, when you need him. I would, I would say to you, it's time to turn on God's gentle glow feature in your life. When things are dark, when you are low, when times are tough, God has permission to light up your life and show you the beauty in the midst of the ashes. If you are facing a hard time, it's time to let God into your life and say, click, click, God, I need to see where I'm going right now. I need to see what's next for me. I need to see what you want me to do to get out of this because I don't want to stay stuck in this pit. I don't want to stay stuck in this despair. I don't want to stay stuck in this sadness. God's gentle glow feature is always available. Always, always on, I would argue. Always on. All we got to do is maybe just roll up his sleeve, let it out. Let it out. All you need to do is let him in. Listen to this passage right here. This is really important. Romans 8, 28. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. What that means is, God can use even your tragedy for good. Oh, when you're in it, I don't want to hear that verse. All right? I just, I don't want the tragedy. All right? Erase it. Make it go away. Make my tragedy go away. But, but what God says is, hey, even though you might go through hard times, if you're leaning into me, I can make this work together for good. I can, I can, bring, I can bring hope and healing out of this. Even in death? Yes. Even in death. But this is a conditional scripture. A lot of people don't want to talk about that because it's like, we'd rather just make it a, an, easy, an easy break. But it says right here that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. And that's the key, really. That's the secret. That's the secret. Is that when, when trouble comes and when hardship comes and the all things that he's talking about, of course, are tough things. If we lean into him, he makes them work together for the good of those who love him. We, we've got to choose that. This is not a faith by works kind of message. This is just all you have to do is look to him, turn to him. I love your story. It, it made me think of that. I'm in, I'm in the drum box listening to you going, man, this is so relevant. This is so relevant, your story of, of the hardship, the struggle. Leaning into God in the midst of the struggle leads to miracles, leads to wonderful things happening. It means there will be some seasons of suffering we have to go through, but our suffering can turn into something good if we lean into God. This is a promise reserved for those who run to God in the midst of their suffering. That's my, that's my call for you. That's my offer to you, that if you're struggling, if you're going through a hard time, if you're experiencing loss, if this season is just hard for you, lean into him. Run to God, not from him. As a pastor for the last 10 years, I've seen a lot of different responses to pain and suffering. But it usually can be broken down into one or two responses. Either people run to God or they run from him. Either we run to the people we love and the people who love us, or we run from them and we isolate and we stay away because there's something, there's something in us that just goes, ah, I want to preserve, I want to save myself, I want to stay in and locked in, and then it perpetuates. It's because, oh, because I'm not around, and because I'm not here, now I need to stay here, and now I can't reach out to God just because I'm in my need, but God says, no, I want you to come to me, 
And even the church is like, come, but it's all right. We don't mind. Come whenever. It's okay. It's an open door. Come, come back. This is what you need, especially in your time of struggle. So let's, let's talk about that because saying, just me telling you to lean into God, that might seem like, well, what does that mean? Am I supposed to imagine him and then like lean? Like, what does that mean? Quit talking, quit talking churchy for a second. What does leaning into God really mean? I, I, would, I would say to you that leaning into God means leaning into the community of God. It means leaning in to this. It means leaning into the community that God, because this is the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the church is the hope of the world. The church is the hope of the world. This is the expression of Jesus on earth. This is how the, the Bible talks about the church is this is how it's manifest. This is how we are supposed to make a difference is all from here. So if we can lean in here, we'll learn more about God. We'll get closer to him. We'll get the hope and support that we need. We will learn and grow all right here. So when I say lean into God, I would say lean in right here. And the way to lean in right here is through our growth track. And we talk about it all the time, but it's, it's a really important step for people to take. All growth track is, is three steps. Three steps of coming after church and, and learning a little bit about us as, a, as, as like the leaders and who we are and why we do things the way we do them. We help you to discover your gifts and talents and your personality so that you can be you know, on the team and be a part of what's going on around here. And then we, we call this joining the, joining the team. We call it the dream team. Is everybody who was wearing a little neck tag, everybody who was giving you hugs and high-fiving you out there, everybody on this platform, everybody in that booth back there, all those Rock stars in those classrooms next door. Come on, somebody. Some of you got kids over there. You're like, yes, for them. Absolutely for them because my kids are over there. Absolutely. But everybody on this dream team is a part of this family, part of this family. And that's, that's, what we call, that's what takes you from being someone who pokes around and attends. Like maybe even you look at yourself like, this is my church. This is absolutely my church. Well, I would say lean even further into being a part of this church by going through our growth track. And it starts next week. It's step one is next week. And you can come and lean in during this season and say, you know what? I'm not going to forget about God during this season. You know what? I'm going to take a step that maybe I've never taken before and go through this little growth track thing, whatever they call it, and learn more about it and, and go through it. Because that's what it means to lean into God during this season is to lean into his family. Lean into his family. This, this is the expression of, of God's goodness here on earth. We're not perfect. Humans aren't perfect. We're not going to always treat everybody perfectly. But this is where we get close to God. This is where we join the community of people who are going to at least encourage us, lead us in the right direction, and help us to have ongoing learning. Amen, everybody? But we must never forget. So that's one thing. That's you. I wanted to start with you. This is how you can get something good going on for your life, especially if you're going through a hard time. But we must never forget about the people outside of these four walls. All right, there's two walls here, a couple walls here, and we're all here, right? Wrong. Wrong. There are so many people outside of these walls that need us very badly during this season, and we have got to remember to get outside of these walls to help as many people as possible. We have to remind ourselves of the people we haven't seen in a while, the people that we haven't seen in a while here, or even the people who've never been into a context like this. Let's not forget about them either. That was me. That was me at one point, all right? So, of course, I'm not going to forget about them. Listen to this story that Jesus tells. Jesus paints the picture this way. He's telling this story about sheep and goats. Awkward, weird, I don't know why, but he's referring to people as sheep and goats. And this is future tense. He's talking, he's telling the story about this is what it's going to be like later on. I'm going to tell you this story. And Jesus, I'm going to skip right to the, the good ones, the sheep. Let's talk about them. Matthew 25, verses 35 through 40. Listen to what Jesus says. For I was hungry... And you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply. This is interesting. When, when, when did we ever do that? <laughs> I don't remember doing that for you, Jesus. I'm looking at you right now. I can't remember when I gave you a drink. I didn't give you a, a drink. What are you talking about? I don't understand. When did we ever see, see you hungry and feed you, thirsty, give you something to drink, or stranger and give you hospitality, naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick and in prison and visit with you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it for the least one of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it unto me. You were doing it for me. Jesus is telling us that when you go out there 
and you help someone else, you would bring them in, you show them hospitality, you feed them, you, they're, they're hungry and you feed them. Listen, people are hungry out there. You understand this? They're not just hungry for food. They're hungry for encouragement from God's word. And God says, when you give them that encouragement, you're not just encouraging them. You're encouraging me. You're doing it for me. You're not just doing it for them. You're doing it for me. They're thirsty out there. They're not just thirsty for water. They're thirsty for refreshment from God's spirit. And Jesus says, when you, when you refresh them, when you go in my name and you refresh them, you're not just refreshing them. You're refreshing me. Are you seeing this? People are estranged out there. They're strangers in a strange land. They don't have community. And when we go, Jesus says, when we go and invite them in, we're not just inviting them in, we're inviting God in. This is what Jesus said. This is profound to me. That when we go and act on behalf of God, we're not just doing it for them. It's easy to think that way. I'm just, I'm helping people out. No, I'm, I'm actually worshiping God in that act. I'm worshiping God in that, that people are sick and need us to care for them and pray for them. When we pray for them and, and, and lay hands on them to heal them, we're actually blessing God when we do that. People are imprisoned. People are imprisoned. They're not just in prison like I was. They're not just in, they're not just locked up in that sense. They're in prison to a life of sin. They're in prison to a, a life without God. And when we go and Jesus said, visit them, that means go where they are. Don't just sit back here and go, well, you know, if they want to go some God, maybe they'll show up, you know. You know if they, well, they know where we're at, you know, it's like 10 o'clock, where are they? Jesus said, when you go and visit them, you're visiting me. When you go out, we have a value here. We engage people. We make the first move. That's our value. And it comes from the word. No, we, we make the first move. We're the ones that get out of our comfort zone. We're not making them get out of their comfort zone. We're getting out of our comfort zone to reach them. Because we want to bless them and we want to bless God. And we think that honors God. We must be the light in a dark time. We, have to, we, are, we are the ones. Most misquoted, one of the most misquoted scriptures in all of the Bible, Matthew 5.14 you are the light of the world, said Jesus. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. A lot of people, oh, Jesus, he's the light of the world. Give him a shout of praise. No, he said, you are. Jesus said, I want to use you. I want to use you to make a difference in this world. You are the hands and feet of Jesus. You are the ones that are talking with your coworkers. You are the ones talking with your neighbors. God's spirit is working on them, but it, there is something that you need to do you got to open your mouth. Be bold. Just, just ask them how they're doing. Just, just start a conversation. There are so many people that could be helped if we would just be willing to take out the earbuds and start a conversation with someone instead of just walking right by. Do you see what I'm saying? We are the light of the world. Let's do this. And if it's you, if you are the one who is lost and broken and hurting today, simply receive what God has to offer, the healing, the hope, the life. How? By refreshing Others. This is probably one of my favorite, most favorite scriptures in all the Bible. Listen to what it says. It's Proverbs eleven twenty-five. 25. Generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Oh my goodness. Some people ask me, Pastor, oh, I'm just so depressed. What do I do? I need peace. What do I do? I need encouragement. What do I do? I need a job. What do I do? They ask me all kinds of things. And I think of this scripture almost every time. There is a principle of sowing and reaping that I really can't talk enough about. If you, if you need peace in your life, give peace away. If you need to be encouraged, encourage others. It, is, it would not be a bad habit for you to text one person every single day and just tell them you love them and you're praying for them. If you need encouragement, if you need hope, if you need healing, get outside of yourself and watch God move in your life. Watch things transform. Even during the darkest times of your life, even during the most miserable times of your life, especially during the most miserable time of your life, this is the key. This is the ladder that gets you out of your pit. If you could stop long enough, I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I've been there too. When you just want to turtle up, you just want to protect yourself. You just want to guard yourself. And it's so hard to get outside of yourself to be thinking about, man, how can I bless someone else? But I'm telling you, if you're desperate enough, if you, if you need this encouragement enough, you'll try it. 
Get outside of yourself and start blessing someone else. Encourage them and watch God encourage you. Amen. It's, it's so important. If you need healing, heal others. If you're feeling lost, help others get found. If you're feeling hopeless, bring hope to others. If you're experiencing loss, help others get found. Now, during this season, do not forget to keep your eyes open. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask God's Spirit to help you with the eyes to see and and a heart that's tender towards people when you're walking by them because they'll smile at you. They will smile. They are good at smiling and telling you everything's okay. But let's, let's rise above just the, the superficial. Be willing to strike up a conversation with someone and really, and really ask, so how's everything going? Yeah, tell me more about that. And just let them, let them open up to you. It's time to go be a lifeline. We don't just call ourselves that for no reason. It's time to be a lifeline in our community and actually make a difference. If you can bring yourself to lean into God in the midst of your pain and your suffering, it won't only impact your life, it'll impact the world. Um, yeah, I, I lost someone recently. It, it happens more often than is reasonable. Um, but because of my background, you know, with the drugs and the alcohol, um, I get the call every once in a while, and, you know, I've lost a handful of friends because of overdoses, and some of them just didn't get out like I did. Um, so recently, I got a message online uh, from an old friend I hadn't talked to in a long time. They didn't have my numbers. They just Facebook Messenger, and uh, someone that I grew up with had passed away. Um, I was pretty close with this person. Um, this, this gal, we went to high school together, and um, she killed herself um, just a few weeks ago. And I, I grew up knowing her like through high school. I went, I went to her house a lot. I knew her mom. I knew her older sister. I knew her little brother, who was only six years old at the time. Um, she leaves behind two sons under 10 years old. It's, it's, I don't even know what to say. You know, I don't know what to do. I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to know everything, right? But sometimes I just don't know what to say or do because I still have a connection with the little brother. Let's say his name is James. So I reach out to James because I, I know In fact, that his sister was the last of his siblings that were even left. He had another older sister that went missing years ago and never was found. His mother just died two years ago. And now his older sister, the one that I was friends with, took her own life. James, who's now 26 years old, and his father's in and out of the picture and doesn't have, who does he have? How do you say Merry Christmas to him? This is real. People go through this all the time. And it's not fair to them. It's it's extremely difficult. But as a pastor and as someone who wants to help, I just want to help. Just like you, I just want to help him just like anybody. I want to help him. So I was thinking about that, getting ready for this message, And I was looking at that scripture, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. I mean, I can't even get a hold of him. You know, I messaged him a couple times and then he wouldn't get back to me anymore. And it's just, you could pray for James. Um, But I do have a glimmer of hope because I know what it looks like to be a refreshment in in the midst of pain. I want to go back to the Lesko story, Levi Lesko story. Because that story I told you in the beginning of this message didn't end there. Actually, the punchline is the good part. So Levi goes to the hospital with his wife. His five-year-old had passed away. They're at the hospital. It's that day. And they're crying, of course. They're devastated. But it's Christmas time. And they're pastors of a really large church, so they have Christmas services. And they're, they're walking out of there, and the, one of the nurse, because the whole, the whole hospital's like broken up. You know, it's like when something like that happens, everyone's feeling it. And as, as they're walking out, one of the nurses just says, hey, is there anything? They like get outside of their uniform and are just like, hey, is there anything I can do? Is there anything, I, any way I can? And this, this part blows me away and almost like shocks me. But this is how he tells the story. He 
takes out one of his little invite cards. <laughs> just lost his daughter. Okay, this is crazy. Christmas service invite card. And, he's, and the, the tears are all there. And he said, you could sit with me. You could come and you could just be with me. And you could come. The nurse is shocked. She's like, are you kidding me? You're inviting me to church? And so she's blown away. She decides to come. She brings all of her family. They all get saved. The next month, they, they bring all of their friends and family. They all get saved. Probably like 150 people get saved based on Pastor Levi, who is my hero now. <laughs> In the midst of his pain, encouraging someone else. Even in the midst of that kind of hardship, he was still able to encourage someone else. And there's hundreds, if not thousands of people connected to that family that are all going to heaven now and not hell, all going to heaven and living for the Lord now because he was able to get outside of himself and bless someone, even in the midst of it. And I, I have to believe, and so this was years and years and years and years ago, and their church has continued to, to grow and everything. And I have to believe, because I, I try to imagine, and I don't even want to imagine what it would be like for that to happen. I have a seven-year-old daughter. I don't want to talk about it, okay? But I try to imagine what it must be like for him every single Christmas. And then I imagine what he has to do to stay encouraged. He has to encourage others. He has to get out of himself. He has to bless others because that's what God teaches us is gonna help us. If you are experiencing loss, ladies and gentlemen, if you're experiencing hardship, if you face a tough season where your heart is broken and you just don't know what to do, just start loving on people. Start caring for people. Start reaching out to them. Start blessing them. And watch God strengthen your heart. Watch God strengthen you from the inside out and give you the courage and strength that you need and live the life that you were always designed to live. I'm believing that if we do this, it could change, it could change our world. If we could learn to look this way, instead of, instead of retreating back, if we could get outside of our own circle and, and begin to look out and, and encourage the people around, if, if all of us did that, it could change our, not only our city, it would, it would spread. I believe that's what the church is always supposed to be like. Always. That's my encouragement for you. Do this. Receive the blessing, but also make a difference in the lives of others and watch how it blesses you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for bringing a, a healing message today and giving us the tools that we need to move forward. God, I ask that if there's anyone here that is on the edge of faith, if there's anyone here that, that needs the encouragement, anyone here that needs to receive Jesus as not only their Savior, but also their Lord, never done that, Lord, I pray that their heart would be open right now to do it. I pray for open hearts right now. So if that's you, if, you, if you're ready to give your heart to Jesus, or maybe you're ready to give your heart back to him because you used to live for him, but you drifted away a little bit. You're ready to come back. Maybe it's the very first time for you. Either way, now's your moment. If you would do that with me, if you would just lift your hand when I say so, and we're gonna pray a prayer together. If that's you, would you just lift your hand? Be bold and lift it up. Say, that's me, I'm ready. Amen, I see you. Amen, I see you too. I see you. This is your moment. I see you, I see you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, God, so much. Thank you so much. Church, could you just pray this prayer with me? Let's all pray it out loud together as a family. Say, Father God, saying, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your spirit and show me the way to live. In Jesus' name, amen.